brake of cylinder turned in to the right curb to the outside, to the right curb stone towards the middle of the track, to the left curb to the right side, end of the right curb towards the left curb stone, about to steer in the air, and orange flag turned into the right curb stone, and straight. Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring Nordschleife, quite literally. By now you really should know where we are and why we're here, because we're doing our first lap of the year, but uh, we ended up making almost probably like, what, 10 videos, where I explain to you uh, things about the corners, show you some significant uh, remarks, uh, remarks, some uh, trophies, some, um, basically a lot of things that you otherwise will not be able to spot when you're driving quite fast. So on foot you can see a lot of more, a lot of more interesting details, we can go of course over details about every single graffiti so Leonardo fans I'm happy for Leonardo that he has some fans but uh, let's move on we are now brunching the YouTube corner and we will go towards Flans Garden my favorite section of the track probably uh, where I will tell you how to take it how to be safe there and uh, most importantly stay safe in general but also stay safe in Brunch and do not to try to impress all the public all the audience here uh, by uh, drifting or trying to end up on auto addiction because um, in the past there might be another reason why you would end up on their channel uh, but uh, yeah you get what I mean and if not stay tuned yes. It's actually a pretty good line because you should be driving like on that curbstone before entering the braking zone for Brunchen 2. Yeah, let's talk more about the line and how to brake, where to brake, where to turn in than the weird introduction that they just had. In any case, the braking point. Mm, the Audi Graffiti, I would say, is a nice one. You can actually see also lots of rubber here accumulated from the braking on the curbstone. And the turning point is a quite interesting one. So it is a relatively late turning point, which is at the end of the rumble strip. The issue that we have here, however, in 2000, I believe 17 to 18, this section has been repaved. So new tarmac. And over there you see old tarmac. And as you have learned from the previous videos, old tarmac means lots of rubber is there accumulated from the driving on the dry days, etc. etc. So the issue that you have here is if you're driving in the wet, yeah, you already have the old section. You go from the new grippy section onto the old slippy one, especially which is extra slippy in the wet, because you can also see the off banking, more water is accumulating there on that side, in addition with the extra rubber that you have there. Very, very slippy. So in the wet, stay on the outside. Use the graffiti as your reference point because you know the cars are not driving here in dry days and do not scrub graffiti off. So go here and do not worry. Graffiti is not slippy because you can see it's just a bit of surface paint, but it is significantly grippier, 100 times grippier than the rubber on the right side of the track. Also here, big Swedish flag. I think upside down, yep. Um, yeah, so you end up on the left side over there. Usually, auto addiction is standing and filming, so this should give you more of a familiar corner view if you're watching lots of YouTube. Let's proceed towards Ice Curve, and I thought my favorite section, Flans Garden. Quick jump forward because I want to preserve the battery and not talk too much to Ice Curve. This yellow point, this yellow graffiti, oh, I didn't know it was actually S04, I only saw the 4, is a turning point towards the left curb. So, so pretty late turn in in Ice Curve. So, and also watch out in the wet, the inside is very slippery, so stay longer on the outside before proceeding to Flans Garden. Then here you have the curbstone of Ice Curve. I would say it's optional, of course, when you're gunning for lap times or, well, yeah, being in the race or lap record attempts, you should take it. It also depends on the type of car. But quite often you can actually stay off it. 
the biggest challenge that comes with this curbstone is in wet conditions because you it is quite grippy in the wet but once you drop there on the slippy surface your car can break out especially real wood driven cars when you drop on it you can yeah uh, oversteer and this is why we see on the right actually we have new barriers this is the reason for that because the cars drop oversteer and go into the barrier on the right once you overcome the curbstone of ice curve you aim towards the fence 169. In sim racing, it's actually a fence that is quite difficult to spot and you want to turn in to the left side already, but trust me, aim for the fence because as I mentioned in previous videos, there is a reason why the fence is there because it is positioned on the ideal line. Aim for the fence, therefore, and then you can start steering towards the left curbstone before you proceed in a straight line to Flans Garden Jump and just simply being blessed by such an amazing view. From here we can see it quite clearly actually. There's the fence 169 and completely in a straight line from here you go past the left curb, past the right curb, at the left curb you go on the brakes so it's straight line just like many other corners before that I showed to you although it is kind of left right left you just go straight between them aim for the last aim for the braking spot aim for the apex and once you are at the left curbstone of Flans Garden you should go on the brake but what's even more important is that you should go off the brake before the jump because like I explained two videos ago these situations where, where your wheels lift off due to bumps or jumps can activate your ABS and the problem is is that after that you need to go on the brakes again but if due to ABS you cannot go full on the brakes oh, you can have a nasty hairy situation and this happens quite a lot and as some cars are more sensitive for let's so to say these situations when your wheels have slight lift off than others like mentioned previously BMW M4 but also with the AMG GTR when we had a lap with Adam Kerstadulu we had the same issue little break ah! <laughs> <laughs> I always want to get air over there and I, I'm pushing my luck more and more and the ABS kicked in and it didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> or also me myself when I was driving a Megane RS same situation happened the ABS was fully engaged when I already landed and I almost re-rendered an Audi R8 it was kind of unpleasant I would say I hate when ABS kicks in yeah. after that end of the curbstone is a nice reference point for the turn in to the right curb and from here it is pretty much flat out the whole section up until slightly after Belfast Schwabenschwanz but of course if your car is not well set up you should brake a bit before that before we get there I just quickly want to show you the view over Flans Garden that you otherwise will not see unless you're looking in your rear view mirror but you shouldn't be doing it because you should look ahead for be able to making this turn here to the right but this is really beautiful one of my all-time favorite pictures was taken here together with Bugatti Chiron Pours Pour two years ago after Flans Garden towards Flans Garden 2 it's best to aim to the middle of the track and then be ready to go towards the left curbstone before proceeding to the right curbstone that we will see in a bit It's actually not really a curbstone, so here you have a left curb, but more of a rumble strip on the right side. So there, the right curb, and we have here the rumble strip on our right, and then at the end of it, you should start steering in towards the left side of the track or the blind left curb. So, end of the rumble strip, also a white dot that indicates that it's a turning point towards the left curb and it's a very high speed section and especially when you're traveling all the way flat out from Flans Garden 1 and also over this straight and here you turn in and you have another jump you will be kind of jumping and sideways so you really need to prepare to counter steer mid 
air before going towards the turning point for Vale of S. I don't even know if the camera captures on foot enough of the elevation change, but in the car you definitely feel it. Here, by the way, like a nice bench, which I definitely want to come here to one day, but it is behind the fence, it's not really official spectators area, so I would need to get like media trackside license to sit here and spectate. Uh, I have an idea for a video involving this bench. It's actually sounding more romantic than it actually is. In any case, stay on the left side, you can see it's a nice straight, and in the bottom there is either white sign 176 or the orange flag, which can be used or should be used as a turning point towards the right curbstone. With like an average car you should probably break before making a turn to the right, but with a very well set up car you can keep it flat to the right if you know the track layout and of course also your car's capabilities. So just from a different perspective, coming downhill close to this side and braking optionally and at 176 or better at the orange flag you turn in towards the right curbstone. I only have 2% left of the battery so I will probably swap to my phone to finish the lap in a bit. And then coming down from Flanskaren 2 you have here in the past it used to be called Flanskaren 3 but now it's Bell of S and it's still also a jump and because of the track's characteristics and the speeds that you're doing due to lateral g-forces you're being pushed to the outside and in combination with the jump and also being blind crest because when you're driving you cannot see exactly when you're going so you really need to know where the track is going it can be quite surprising quite unsettling and this is also where i had a very big accident last year after which i said like well i'm not gonna be instructing anymore at least for the coming time because i was a passenger and a lift happened the driver lifted and with addition with combination with all those characteristics the car lost control and we ended up ping-ponging the barrier i think at 180 ish kilometers per hour close to it it was quite an yeah unfor unfortunate and unpleasant experience i have to correct myself it was not ping-ponging we just hit with the rear wheel with the hardest part of the car so not with the bumper or a crash structure the barrier in reverse and yeah that was very unpleasant impact so be very cautious get to know the track especially for this section before you start taking extra speeds carrying extra speeds through here so be safe safety is important and uh, with safety also comes speed afterwards <laughs> And to fast forward to the main straight. Wait, what? I was skipping the rest of the track. Why is it snowing? Well, we've been walking for 10 days, so that's uh, why it can start snowing. No, on a serious note, I realized when I was editing this video, it would become like over half an hour long video. So I'm going to cut it here. And tomorrow we will proceed with the final stretch from Belfast towards Schwabens to Schwanz and eventually to Döttinger Höhe. And the day after, I will tell you about the construction works. So hope you guys enjoyed this one and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.